And the last part of the course is something I have been using for oh, probably 20 years is a audit trail. And I like it because it's simple uh, to use and simple to implement and it's quite adaptive. So let's um, take a look at an audit trail. We're going to use several of the pieces that we have learned in this course, including uh, stored procedures, triggers, of course SQL, uh, I mentioned stored procedure, and well, we'll, we'll try that. So let's switch over to uh, SQL server. So there are three components to my little uh, audit trial system. Um, and instead of me typing a bunch of code here and fumbling with the keyboard, I have just uh, displayed it on here to show you what these components are and how they work together. So first we'll look at a table. We will create a uh, table. This is a standalone table. I name it audit log. And it's fairly simple. It's got a uh, primary key. Notice I begin with an extremely small number here. So it has plenty of room to grow. Um, we have the date and time of the audit. Whatever the, so what an audit trail is, I should explain this a little bit, is we like to track changes to our data sometimes. Not for every table, but for key tables. It's nice to be able to see when it changed, how it changed, who changed it. Uh, this has proved invaluable to me over the last 20 years of using this thing. Because a lot of times you just say, oh, I didn't do anything. And say, so, well, let me see. Bring up the audit trail, you can trace their steps and what they changed and when they changed it and what it's from to. So it's, it's not, not to uh, get users, obviously, but to try to figure out what series of events led up to Perhaps why we might have bad data in there, which helps us helps our developers build better applications and helps um, us to understand how things got the way they are. So um, we want to know when the when the event happened. So we have the audit date and time. We want to know which table was modified. So we have the table name. We like to know what action it was. If there's an insert, an update, or a delete. Uh, what user ID triggered the uh, the change? What machine it executed from? Uh, ID name is the name of the primary key of the table that was modified. This helps with queries sometimes. And notice here we have a data type called XML. This is uh, stores XML data into a column in our database. So we're going to have one for the old data, the previous data, and one for the new data. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this. I am in my ITD-132 database. I run this. Oh, cannot find stored procedure. New data. What? Hold on. Oh, the problem is I, I had it highlighted. Let me try this again. There we go. Now we have a table over here. If we come look at our table, we will see we have a new table named audit log. Okay, so part one of this is to create the table. We have that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at create a um, stored procedure. This stored procedure will take five variables the name of the table, the name of the primary key, who changed it, what the old data is, and what the new data is. So let's create the stored procedure, uh, and later on we'll have a trigger that executes to um, update, to, to execute the stored procedure. Okay, so um, nothing real fancy here. Now, first thing we want to understand is what action causes this? Is it an insert, an update, or a delete? So we're going to start out with a zero here. Uh, this trigger action. So if we have old data, meaning our trigger passes old data, and we know from our lessons and triggers that this would come from the deleted 
table. So basically, if we have deleted data, we will say we well, we have old data. It's not null. We will set this action to one. If we have new data, meaning it's either an update or an insert, we're going to take the trigger action, whatever it was, either zero or one, and we're going to add two to it. So the result of this says, if this trigger action is a one, meaning we only had the one and not the two added to it, it's a delete. If it's a two, meaning there was a trigger action, but we added two to it, it's an insert. And if it has both a old data and new data, it was an update. So we're setting our action here. And we're going to make sure at least one of these is um, not null. Um, I don't know why we put, I put this in here. Probably sometime, somehow we got null data both. So it's just a, just a little check. If we have at least one of these has data or both, we're going to insert a row into the audit log table. We have the name of the table. The action, insert, update, or delete, the user ID, machine name, ID name, old data, new data. And the values are going to be the table name that was passed to us, the action, insert, update, or delete, who changed it. Um, this would be the machine name. PK name is passed to us, which is the name of the uh, uh, primary key. We have the old data and the new data. So let's execute this. And we now have our stored procedure. Okay. And let's go to our... So what we're going to do is we want to add a to our part table here, a trigger. And this will be an audit trail trigger for our part table. So let's go look at the trigger and the audit trail. Um, this says um, create trigger audit part. So we'll have one of these for each table that we want to have the audit trail turned down for. So here we have part, insert, update, delete, uh, declare some variables here, old data and new data, and change by. And let's look at our query here. So old data is going to be from our deleted table. Remember that in a trigger, if their rows have been either updated or deleted, there will be a row, corresponding row of the deleted table. And we will set these for XML auto. We'll do the same thing for new data. Comes from inserted. Remember from triggers, if it's either inserted or updated, we have a row in the inserted table. And again, we make this for XML auto. And we'll set the change by to the uh, whoever is logged in. Um, if so, nothing is passed to us, we'll, we'll grab the original login. And now we execute our generic auto audit. Uh, the name of the part is dbo.part. So the name of the table is the part table. Primary key is part ID. It was changed by either the one they gave us or we'll grab the original login. And then we have our old data and our new data. So as simple as that, as simple as a trigger, all we have to do is add this to any table we want. And the only thing we have to change is the name of the table and the primary key. Everything else is done for us. Well, we have also have to change the table the trigger is on. So let's execute this. And now let's go look at our data and let's see what happens. So let's go to our part table. If I update my triggers here, I should see I have a new one called audit part. 
I'm going to right click on my part and say edit top 200. <clears throat> I will add a new part. Um, Bob's part. I'm floating in hand. It'll be zero. Uh, current value is zero. There is no termination date. And the price is $100. Okay. A value now cannot be inserted to common part ID. All right. So apparently I don't have a identity turned on here. So let's do that. So there is our, we add a new part. Let's now go to our audit log. And let's let top 100 rows. I'm sorry, 1000 rows. And we can see from here that we have a new row inserted into our audit log. Uh, we have the date and time, the name of the table. This was an insert. Make this a little bigger. Whoops. Ah, shoot. All right, so I can't make it bigger. Uh, user ID is uh, interesting. B does at Reynolds. Uh, the name of the machine is my computer here at home. The primary key ID is part ID. There is no old data because this is an insert. And if I look at my new data, it's an XML file, and I can see my XML. I can see what was inserted. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, let's take our part. Let's add some quantity to it. We'll add uh, 10 units. Uh, current value is now $500. And let's change the price to $99.99. Let's go back to our audit log, execute this again, and now we see we have an update. Same user, same machine, uh, time changed slightly. We have the old data, 0, 0, 100, and we have the new data of 10, 599.9. So simple as that, uh, our audit log kicked in, and we now have a trail of what happened. And now let's go back to our data, and let's delete row 22, right click and delete. Uh, we have a price history. Hold on a minute. So what happens is we, we have a we have a um, primary key constraint because whenever we change the price, remember it updates our price history table. So let's just come in here and I will delete the trigger for that. Um, How come I can't disable my trigger? I'm not sure why I cannot delete my, or uh, disable my price trigger. So um, let's cheat a little bit just for the heck of this. And I'm going to delete my last part price row here. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why I can't disable my trigger. Ah, I can't delete that. There we go. And now I'm going to delete my part. It's gone. Let me go back and look at my audit log. 
and we now have a delete so we have an insert an update delete notice here now we have old data but obviously we don't have new data and this shows us what it was uh, the last time uh, what the values were when it was deleted it's a nice simple easy to implement system uh, i love it been using it like i said for probably 20 years now if not longer it works um, and it's proved invaluable so many times once we have the, the table uh, let me close some of this down once we have the table here and the generic audit trail here stored procedure all we have to do now is just add triggers to whatever items we want to do uh, to track um, real simple real easy and again it has proved invaluable many times so that's combining uh, XML with SQL uh, with stored procedures and triggers to create a really simple and effective and invaluable audit trail. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, until next time, take care.